I want to explore three things. One is the idea of volunteering cultures and what we might mean by volunteering culture. One is some of the risks following from that about volunteer management. And then one is an idea of uh, volunteering as a type of co-production. And I want to think about that as how that might be relevant to some of what you guys do. That may be how you already think what you do. I think some of this stuff is really important because in the global review, there's a big emphasis on the impact of greater global mobility of people, of greater migration and increasing diversity. So I want us to keep that in our minds when I talk through some of these things. So here we have um, a comment from uh, someone as part of the, of the Global Review talking about how volunteering is not just a technical exercise, you know, volunteering is not just a kind of delivery mechanism. And here we can see in this comment that, you know, it, it, the Red Cross kind of volunteering comes together with an idea of service and solidarity and a culture of volunteering that already existed in this West African state. So it's not just a technical thing, it's a cultural thing. It's part of people's history and identity and lives. So if you extend that further, here's another really nice piece of um, data which talks about there is an unorganized volunteer work that was done before the establishment of our Red Crescent Society. So volunteering is tied up with history, it's tied up with identity, it's tied up with what takes place already and what's already swirling around in a society in lots of different settings. But it is also not necessarily as formal as we've come to think about it. So, you know, the great emphasis on volunteer management and technical support and all those kinds of systems, of course, is not the only way to think about volunteering. So let's have a look at another couple of quick quotes. This is very much um, about the Red Cross culture of volunteering. And the person is saying poor governance within our national society, misappropriation, bad management of volunteers, non-respect of the text and fundamental principles are some of the things that are discouraging and make it difficult to be a volunteer. So this person says we're not delivering volunteering as it should be. We're not delivering it appropriately. We're not delivering the Red Cross culture. But this person says, hmm, I tried to become a Red Cross volunteer and they describe how um, they're filling out lots of forms. They're inviting me back for an interview. Um, they found that they couldn't uh, get their references and paperwork sorted out properly. Then there were no vacancies. And it says it took me four months to become part of the Red Cross, but it took me just 10 minutes to join the Amnesty family. So here, someone is saying this Red Cross culture of volunteering is actually the problem. It's not actually um, helping. So that leads us to a question about what kind of volunteering culture produces what kind of types of volunteer management approach. And I suppose one of my questions to you is you may be pretty much the biggest volunteering organization in the world. And I know Sean has told me on one occasion up to 117 million, but you know, you guys have so many volunteers, you can't necessarily count them very well. But some of the other people on the block who do volunteering are bringing some different things to the table. They're bringing some kind of exciting, unusual, short term, less formalized, all sorts of things going on. So do you run the risk that some of those people who you might have engaged don't recognize the volunteering culture as something they can participate in? And what if some of the people who you had on board start looking over the fence and going, hmm, that looks a bit of fun. So how do you cope with this diversity and complexity? And this is where I want to think about the concept of volunteering. So in this slide, we can see here, you take your concept of volunteering, you use it to deliver the thing you need to deliver. It's a fairly straightforward thing. But of course, that concept of volunteering is not necessarily straightforward. So I want to ask you to think about something else. Co-producing is an idea that is about focusing on the multiple relationships that produce what volunteering is. Not just how you deliver volunteering, but the concept of volunteering becomes co-produced with the volunteer and beneficiary communities, with national societies and volunteers, with the federation and national societies. The point is what volunteering is isn't a given, it is co-produced. 
And I've given a little example here, a little journey of some of the things with whom volunteering could co-produce with. So the point about this language of co-production, it's about volunteering with, not for, and allowing volunteering and what volunteering is to change in the process. So there's a whole bunch of things here like family, cultural tradition, beneficiaries, faith, migration, national society, all these different things come together. It is those that make volunteering. And when I know you've been hearing um, some volunteer stories, those volunteer stories don't exist on their own. They come through all this stuff. And if we think more about the kind of relationships and equal relationships that help us produce volunteering, then we perhaps start being able to better deal with this diversity. So this is my final slide. I'm always loath to use the word cosmopolitan. It's an academic phrase and it's rather alienating. So although I've put it there, you can now forget that I've said it. What I've been trying to think through is what are the, some of the ways, um, what are some of the concepts that would help you as an organization deal with some of this complexity, but also thinking about in anticipation of me being at the conference, some of the things that I thought might help you deal with some of the challenges. The cosmopolitan, cosmopolitanism is a whole set of ideas which are about how we deal with growing global complexity and how we have systems of governance that are better able to deal with it, have a greater focus on a more just and equal world. But it also starts from an understanding of cultural difference. And the real key principle is having an openness to difference. I'm not simply saying we are open to different cultures and open to different ways of doing things, but saying in that we're open to changing ourselves as well as the other who we are engaging with changing in the same process. So it's a willingness to change and to move and be different and be flexible. So my question is, to what extent are you as an organization or to what extent are you as national societies or individuals? How much are you containing cultural differences? How much are you containing different volunteering cultures and implementing a Red Cross culture? Or how much are you being open to it and allowing these cultural changes to flow and cause change in lots of different levels? And so my question for you at the conference is, how much can you, as an amazing global organization, think and feel beyond the nation? And if you can, does that enable you to start thinking about all these different volunteering cultures as your global resource for hybrid knowledges? And by that, I mean different knowledges of volunteering, ones that are challenging, that are emerging, that, that emerge out of very challenging circumstances. How much of these volunteering cultures the space for you to develop mutual learning and perhaps most importantly given the unbelievable kind of situations that Red Cross volunteers work in how might engaging with these volu volunteering cultures in this way help you engage with so different kinds of solidarity in productive and supportive ways that's my five minutes thank you Matt and uh, we wish you a speedy recovery <laughs>